Global headlines, a new film about the war-torn country is taking the Russian box office by storm. Based on true events, it is the story of a Russian playing crew captured by the Taliban, who were a little-known militant group at the time. RT's Tom Barton has been separating fact from fiction. This is archive footage of the makeshift prison where seven Russian plane crew spent over a year in Taliban hands. For 378 days, they were tortured, starved and subjected to constant attempts to convert them to Islam. Now their saga has been turned into a major motion picture. In this situation, when you, a peaceful person, gets imprisoned, in this moment all the best and worst features of the human character are revealed. For them it was the hardest test to pass, 378 days of uncertainty. I would never wish anyone to go through that. To understand their plight, we have to go back to the chaotic Afghanistan of 1995. Bahanuddin Rabbani is nominally president, but the country is in civil war and the Taliban are on the rise. Into the maelstrom flies Vladimir Sharpatov and his crew in their cargo plane. The Taliban were fighting against the government and had found out the destination of the ammunition flight. They were waiting for them. We flew taking shells for the Rabani government but were intercepted. So the Taliban took these shells. But they also had another agenda to show that Russia was still fighting in Afghanistan, wanted to provoke Russia to see what actions it would take. Once in Taliban hands, all the anger of the war with the Soviet Union years before was directed against them. For them, we were pagans, the untouchables. They would just bring in groups and show us like animals in a zoo. They showed us their wounds and stumps, saying, this is what your soldiers have done. So we represented the whole of Russia and were to blame for everything. They went through many trials. They were bundled off as government forces attacked Kandahar. and brought back again when the attack failed. Their spirits sank. But just as all seemed lost, a medical team from the Russian government was allowed in to visit them, bringing supplies and news from loved ones. We had a very productive stay. The four of the crew, if I'm not mistaken, had developed hepatitis, and we left them all the necessary medication. Sadly, the treatment and food they were given were quite poor, very poor, but we gave them as much support as we could. Negotiations, however, bogged down, and it became clear to the men they would have to try and escape. They chose their moment carefully, seized back their plane, and flew home. The film Kandahar tries to portray the ordeal these men went through, but it was their counterparts in real life who escaped their captors and returned home as heroes to Russia in 1996. And today, with the power of the Taliban apparently on the rise once again, Perhaps it's time we remembered the perseverance and resourcefulness of Vladimir Shaparov and his crew. Tom Barton, RT.